this chair is also pretty squeaky. Welcome back. I am in my lovely apartment. I'm staring at my beautiful flowers that I got from a friend. Thank you, friend. Today I'm going to talk about how to be emotionally stable. I think I've made quite a lot of progress in the past two years through my own journey to emotional stability. And let me tell you one thing. Emotional stability comes from a lot of factors. They all contribute to one thing. And emotional stability is not just one perfect high achievement that you will stay at for the rest of your life. It's all about self-regulation, constant self-regulation. And the more you practice regulating yourself and your thinking patterns, the easier it becomes to be more emotionally stable. Emotional stability doesn't mean that you are a stone cold robot with zero emotions. It just means that you're able to still function as a human being when you're emotional. So I'm gonna divide this video into two parts. The first part is the inward regulation or things that you can do to help yourself self-regulate. The first thing that I would say that you need to have is me time. And I don't mean spending a Friday night alone. I mean like actually going out and doing something fully on your own as an independent human being. The thing is, a lot of people who are have emotional storms within them are constantly around external factors that feed into their thinking and their lives all the time. And they never really know what it's like to be out of that. Um, people also struggle to find who they are and to trust their own instincts a lot when they don't spend any time. So an example of this would be, I guess, taking yourself out on dates a lot, exploring new areas by yourself, even practicing a hobby for extended periods of time. So number two is to express your emotions. Now I know we're talking about emotional stability and a lot of people might think, oh, emotional, Stability means you are able to basically not show much or go too crazy or whatever. And I think people, a lot of people don't understand that unhealthy people might express their emotions in the wrong way, especially around people and make social atmospheres really difficult to be in. Um, it's like those types of people who you kind of just want to get away from because they just emotionally dump everything on you. And that's not what I am saying here. I'm saying you should pick the right place in time to be able to express your emotions. So let's say I had a bad day at work and someone like a coworker wasn't treating me well. I would remember in my mind that at work is probably not the wisest time to like get angry, cry and whatever, because it would get in the way of my day. And you're also giving that other person power over you if you do that. In my personal opinion, I would just remember in my head, okay, when I get home today, I get to go lie in my bed and cry and write in my journal about it and feel it and process it, listen to sad songs, I don't know, whatever gets you in that emotional space and being okay with it. Cause I think a lot of people are scared of that. But be okay with it because once you cry and you get it out, all of a sudden you might actually feel, oh, okay, I've processed it, um, I'm through it, and now I actually feel better. Because the thing is, emotions are energy in motion, so they don't, if they don't go anywhere, they're gonna come out in the wrong places. So make sure that you let them out in controlled channels. And then number three, start valuing peace and quiet. The tranquility of sitting in nature and just appreciating how beautiful it is. Staying at home alone on a Friday night and reading a book. Um, basically not having external disruptions to your peace is very important because it gives your brain time to regulate. If you're constantly on your phone chatting to people or constantly around busyness and chaos, it's, it's easy for our brains to learn chaos and stress is normal versus the opposite, which is actually being able to decide how you spend your time and who and what influences your emotions. Um, this also goes with like friendship circles and gossip and it's, it's good to have friends and have fun with your friends, but if your friend's just gossiping all the time and telling you about Sue who did them dirty or does not create peace in your mind. And now we'll be focusing on the outward <laughs> um, 
I guess, things, I don't know what to call the outward uh, focusing tips. My biggest piece of advice is to focus prolonged negative energy on things outside of yourself. I know I said that you should spend time really dealing with and feeling and processing and crying and you know, those kinds of very pure emotions. But there is also a time where we can't wallow in those things for too long. So if you're feeling like your negative emotions are dragging on for longer periods of time to the point where you can't really function properly because you're always sad or upset, as hard as it is, it's always good to focus that energy on things outside of yourself. I started to put that energy into painting. So I would challenge myself into making something really beautiful that added value. I know I took myself seriously enough to create and practice this beautiful art form. Sitting around and worrying on how negative my life was and my problems, I decided I'm going to create a YouTube channel and put my energy into creativity because that's what actually makes me happy. That's what I'm actually I, I want to say good at. <laughs> I don't know objectively if that's true, but I do know that I enjoy it. So whatever you want to do, just make sure that it's a pretty significant chunk of your day or your time or your week or your month so that you switch your brain landscape in your mind to the majority of my time is spent doing A, B and C so that D doesn't encompass all of my time. The problem might not go away immediately, but that doesn't mean you have to stop enjoying your life or being there for other people. And yeah, those are my tips on how to stay emotionally stable. If you practice these things, you'll start building healthier habits and I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll see the rewards from them. Stay cool butterflies. I'll see you in the next one.